And you're listening to WMRWLP Warren Wastefield. Um, we're here with Stefan Van Norden, and he is a filmmaker. And his film, which is going to be showing at the Ideas in the Village Green, uh, Negotiating with Nature. So, Stefan, could you tell us a little background, like where you grew up, or school, or whatever you did? I'm not really an aspiring filmmaker. That kind of came about by accident. I actually live in the house that I was brought up in, but I did. Ha I was in the country. I spent a lot of time in the woods playing in, in, in nature and stuff, but not really interested in gardening. Actually, growing up, I wanted to be a, a painter. The gardening part, yeah, kind of came later in life. Okay. So then what inspired you to make this film, since you're not a filmmaker, but you had a passion or a desire to do it? Um, what made you do the film Negotiating with Nature? When I was younger, at a teenager, there was a brickyard in Lebanon, New Hampshire, called Densmore Brick Company, and they had what is called beehive kills. There are these beautiful structures that they use for making brick. And when I was a teenager, they had, they had gone out of business. We would, I would go down there and look at these beautiful structures. Years later, I went back there to look at them, and they were all overgrown, and they were deteriorating. And I thought that, we, that somehow these had to be recorded. Um, so I was going to make a little video of the, the, the structures, and I started making the video. And one thing led to another, and I actually ended up making a film called Hand of Brick, which is about the Densmore Brick Company. And I made the film, and it got a lot of response. So after doing that, I kind of thought about, well, can I make another film? And so that's how this kind of came about, that I decided to try to make a film about our relationship with the natural world. So then what's the premise of the film? I mean, basically negotiating with nature, so it's working with nature in a form. Yeah, when I decided to to do another film, one of the things I I thought of was like, what am I going to use for a title? My daughter used to ask me, what what do you do out there all day? You know, I would go out to the garden for for hours, and she said, what are you doing out there? And I would say, well, I'm I'm negotiating with nature. So when I decided to do the film, I f took that kind of as its title because I feel that the word negotiating is a word that, that implies that there's two sides that are communicating and giving and taking. And that's where this film comes from, is that I, I really feel after all these years in the garden that there, there is, we, we do have a real connection to the natural world that we are not particularly as a society in tune with right now. Another part of the film is that there's many different ways to have a relationship with, with the natural world. It doesn't have to be gardening. You can, you, there's hundreds of other ways of doing it. The ideas that I try to promote in the film is that, that we are nature. That as humans, a lot of us, or most of us, feel that we are separated from nature, that nature is somewhere else, and that we are not necessarily disconnected, but we're separated. And in the film, and there again, part of spending all my time in my garden is that I realized I'm not separated from nature. Mm. I am, I'm just as much at nature as that tree is and that groundhog or that bird. I'm just as much a part of that as all the other. And that when we can start living our lives with that kind of approach, I think things really change. Gadgets and stuff that are destroying us, and we're out of touch. We're separate. We stay in our houses, we look at our phones, and we don't get in the dirt like you, and you lose touch with your environment. Because as you said earlier, we are all part of this planet. We are Earth. You know, We are one of the organisms that can make it work or can destroy it. I mean, it's pretty. It's a deep subject because when I start thinking about it, how we interact with each other, with the planet, with other species, 
Um, it's sort of mind-boggling because it's a very complicated system, but yet at the same time, it's very easy. It actually can be like a religious experience, you know, because it's, it's, it enters you and it's part of you. It's like when you get your hands into the dirt. It's like bees, ants, they all have their way of doing everything, and we're all disconnected from that and forget that that all plays a role in how this planet works. Yeah, now we are incredibly interconnected, and we always have been. We've lost those connections. I mean, one of the one of the things that happens to me quite often in my garden, I will see either the light coming through, or the time of day, or something, and it will just stop me in my tracks, and I just sit there and just look, and it's just it's just overwhelming beautiful what nature and myself have come together to create and it just it's it makes me feel human it makes me feel alive it makes me feel connected and and i think that's what people need to try to find and i think people are looking for it particularly young people i think are starving for some kind of connection with something that our relationship with nature isn't necessarily about saving the planet. It's, it's really about saving ourselves that our relationship with nature is more important to us than it is to nature because the planet will survive. We may not. I think that's one of the, the biggest things that my garden showed me is how, how to, to, um, get along with other people better. It really teaches me about community in a way that if you, you got to look for it, it's not, you know, it's like if you go into the, if you go for a hike and stuff, if you're just looking at the beauty, it's beautiful. But if you look a little bit deeper, you realize that nature really does have a sense of community. It encourages difference. It wants to have as much diversity as it can have. And that's what we should be trying to do. When I started to decide, okay, I want to make a film about gardening, how do you make that film? I mean, you, you, if you put the word garden or certain things in it, you're just turning people off. When I first started making the film, that it, I felt that it had to have three things. It had to be relevant to our world. It had to be informative. And that it had to be entertaining. That it can't just be a dry... It's not just a dry documentary about our relationship that that there again that relationship is very exciting and it's very entertaining which a lot of people particularly young people don't we haven't shown them that a relationship with nature can be incredibly entertaining so how do you get people to change we we just we start talking about this stuff it's we're not talking about it and that there again, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, my film won't reach a large audience. I wish it would, because I think my film will actually help people to make a change. But also what I'm trying to do I, with the film is to make it so that other people might look at that and say, you know, he's talking about something that's really important. I want to write a book or I want to do something that can help push that along so that if enough if we start talking about this as a society then we will make a change but i think the way we make we make that change is that we we have to make more films like negotiating with nature so do you see anything now that is as an optimist is making you optimistic what are you seeing in people in like your everyday life i i, I mean people like mitchell silver from new york city i find very encouraging because we are urbanizing at an incredible rate and our cities are where people are going to be living. Well, and they're urban in the country too, which I see where I am. See, I, I think it's going to be very different because human beings don't go backwards. They, they never go back to something. They always go forward. And I think it will be very different. And I think in some ways we can't even imagine what it will look like. But I do believe that at some point, I think there may be a, there may be a, a, a very difficult readjustment 
and humans will be caught in the middle of their own, of their own making. I do think that we we are we are as a, as a whole we are intelligent enough, even though we don't see it sometimes. I like when you talk about the the woman taking the kids out in the woods, no matter what the weather conditions is, which teaches you yeah. how to be comfortable in your own skin on the planet that you live on, which is a part of you and you are a part of it. And that creates the connection, which hence things like that are very important. You know, you get rid of the fear. If we are going to survive in a healthy way, we've got to start now. We really do. And that's what I think I'm trying to do in the film is to get this conversation, to help the conversation say, you know, this is, this is where we are. And it is, it is urgent that we start. It's not, it's, I mean, that's part of the film is to say that our, that relationship, that it is urgent that we start changing our ways and that hopefully other people will start into that conversation. More people will come to see the beauty of that relationship that I happen to see. Conversation and talking. I think you've nailed it on the head right there. And okay, well, thank you very much, Stefan, for talking with us about your film. And I hope that people go check it out so we can start talking and solving the problems. All right. Thanks, Tim. All righty.